Welcome to Box Recaps. Today I'm going to explain the movie A History of Violence, released in the year 2005. The movie starts and we see two men named Leland Jones and William Orser, who exit their room in a quiet rural motor court motel in what appears to be the USA Midwest. One says he's going to check out. These two seem very unusual partners because of their age difference. Leland is over 50, while Orser is in his 20s. Leland comes out of the motel office, and Orser asks him what took so long. Leland said he had a problem with the maid, but it's all fixed now. Leland then goes on to ask the boy to get him some water, but they're out. So Orser makes his way back into the motel to get some water, and as he is refilling the pitcher, we see that everyone out there is dead. There's a bloody handprint on the counter. The motel clerk is sitting in a chair, slumped backward as he is dead. The housekeeper can also be seen lying on the floor, dead in a pool of blood. Just as Orser is about to go out after refilling the up, the door annexed to the main hall opens and a five-year-old girl appears, who is horrified at the scene. Orser calms her down, just to shoot her dead too. This is when we go on to learn that these two are actually robbers who travel on the road and keep looting stores and motels in secluded areas. The scene then changes, and we see a man named Tom, who lives in Indiana State and runs a diner. Tom is a family man, and people in the city know him well. Tom's wife, named Edie, happens to be an attorney, and they have two kids named Jack and Sarah. Jack is 16 years old, while Sarah is just 10. Tom and Edie are very deeply in love, and dote on their children. Everybody in the diner knows each other, and addresses each other by their first name. We then see that Jack is playing baseball at high school. He catches a fly ball, ending the game and getting Bobby Singer, a bully, out. Bobby is always bullying him because he is jealous of Jack, and he wants to get back at him outside the game. When they are in the locker room, Bobby tries to bully Jack into a fight. Jack talks his way out of Bobby's challenge with a sense of humor. Later that night, Bobby and a friend are driving around, obviously bored, and they're looking for trouble. They spot Jack and his girlfriend, Judy Danvers, sitting on a corner smoking a joint. They decide to kick Jack's ass, but they almost collide with a pickup truck. Bobby gives the finger to the people in the truck, but quickly backs down when he sees the looks on their faces. Leland and Orser glare at the two high school students with a look that is scary. Orser, on the other hand, goes on to rant about how he's getting sick of all this bullying. The scene then changes to the diner, where Tom is almost about to close up. We just see two customers eating in the diner, and Tom is just waiting for them to go so that he could close up. This is when Leland and Orser enter the diner and right away order coffee. But Tom tells them that it is their closing time, so he's sorry but he will not be able to serve coffee to them. Leland however starts yelling at Tom and the other people in his staff, loudly demands coffee. Tom is a peaceful man and he does not want to fight, so he tells his boys to serve them coffee. He tells the waitress, Charlotte, to go home. On her way out, Orser grabs her, forces her into a chair, and runs his hand over her breast. He orders her not to move. Tom assumes they want to rob him. He offers them all the cash in the register. Leland pulls his gun and says he knows the money is his, then tells Orser to kill Charlotte to make it clear to Tom that they are not just messing around. These two want to kill all the people in the diner, because they do not want to leave any witnesses behind, and this is what they always do. It is now decided that Tom will let them have their way because he does not want anyone in his staff to get hurt. However, when Orser is forcing himself on the waitress, Leland gets distracted for a moment. Taking advantage of the distraction, Tom goes on to smash the pot of hot coffee in his hand across Leland's face, knocking him to the floor and the pistol falls from his grip. Tom leaps over the counter and in one swift move, retrieves Leland's gun. Orser fires at Tom and misses. Tom shoots back, hitting Orser three times in his chest, and Orser falls through the window in the door. Leland crawls back and stabs Tom in the foot, but Tom still manages to shoot Leland in the head and finishes him off. All the people in the diner are shocked to see this, because they never expected such acts of valor from a simple man like Tom. When they ask to interview Tom, he declines and goes to the hospital. While he is in the hospital, he sees on TV that the other people in his staff are being interviewed. His story is featured on the front page of the newspaper and on the local news. When Tom gets out of the hospital, 
the people of his town are gathered outside the hospital and they go on to congratulate him. The media keeps gathering in front of his house. He's polite to them all, but he does not want to speak to them. He says that he does not consider himself a hero, saying any normal man would have done the same thing as he did. Jack is also proud of his father because in this small town of theirs, Tom has now become a hero. Tom's foot injury is not that bad. He does limp for the next few days, but it starts to heal quickly. One night, Edie notices that a black sedan is parked in front of their house for a long time, so she starts feeling suspicious. Tom says that this must be someone from the media, and he does not want to talk to them, so he does not say anything. Tom has now started going to the diner, and the diner is now overcrowded. His business has increased rapidly after the incident with the robbers, because everyone just wants to see Tom. Edie also comes to the diner to help Tom because their staff has not been able to fully manage the crowd that has been pouring in their diner. That day, three well-dressed men enter the cafe that is crowded with well-wishers and customers. These are obviously not local. They sit at the counter and the man in charge named Carl, who wears a suit and dark sunglasses, asks for a cup of coffee. He calls Tom Joey several times, although Tom says he's got him confused with someone else. Carl then goes on to take off his glasses and shows him his face that has many scars. He says Tom must recognize him now, but Tom says that he does not know him or any Joey for that matter. The man insists Tom is from Philly. The man clearly believes he knows Tom. Tom's wife, Edie, gets annoyed at their comments. She insists they order or leave. The leader hands Tom a $100 bill and says, now they're paying customers. When Edie threatens to call the police, the men leave. Edie feels suspicious of these men, so she right away calls the sheriff to run an ID check on these men. The men are driving on a rural road when a patrol car pulls them over. The sheriff, Sam Carney, is a seasoned cop and looks like he means business. The three men, especially the leader, appear not the least bit phased by his implied threats. Carl just tells the officer that they are tourists and tells him to keep up the good work and then pulls up the window of the car, telling his driver to drive on. Later on, when Tom and Edie are home, Sam comes to their place to talk about what happened at the diner earlier. Sam warns them that these three men are mob figures, organized crime from the East Coast. He called some police contacts in Philadelphia, as well in the FBI, but he couldn't get any information or find any criminal record on Joey Cusack, which is the name they called Tom by. But there is a Richard Ritchie Cusack in Philly, the leader of an Irish-American crime family based in Philadelphia, to which these three men are connected. Sheriff then goes on to ask Tom if he knows any of these men, but Tom makes it clear that he has never seen these men adding that they must have seen him in the news and mistaken him for someone else. Time goes by and these people keep stalking Tom and his family. One day, Tom sees their car going in the direction of his house. He limps back to his house and, huffing and puffing, runs in and grabs his shotgun, only to find that nobody is coming. The next day, Edie is shopping at a local mall when her daughter runs off. In going after her, Edie runs into Carl, the leader of the men, who casually begins talking to Edie, claiming that her husband is not who he claims to be. Edie defends Tom, and Carl simply suggests that she ask Tom about Richie Cusack, who Carl says is Tom's brother, and he tells Edie to ask Tom how he is so good at killing people. On that same day, Tom's son, Jack, gets confronted by Bobby again and is unable to walk away. Enraged at the continued taunts, Jack suddenly proceeds to seriously beat down Bobby and his buddy, putting Bobby in the hospital. Later that day, when Jack gets home, Tom goes on to give him a piece of his mind for being violent at his school. But the boy, in return, makes snide comments over his dad killing people. Tom gets angry and slaps Jack, who leaves the house. After a while, Carl, along with his men, show up at Tom's house, telling him to come with them. When Tom says no, one of the men steps out of the car holding Jack. Carl makes it clear that he knows who Tom really is, and that Tom has no choice but to get into the car and drive back to Philadelphia to see some people. Tom is forced to put down his weapon, and the men release Jack, who runs into the house. When the men tell Tom to get in the car, Tom tells them that it would be better for them to leave him and his family alone. One of the men points a gun at Tom's head. 
Edie watches from the second story window and sees Tom grab the man's arm, break it, strike the man's nose upward repeatedly with his palm, and shoot the other man with two rounds in the man's chest. It is now clear that Tom knows his way around weapons, and he is a good fighter too. Carl shoots Tom, wounding him in the shoulder, and Tom loses the pistol in his hand. Carl stands over the wounded Tom and angrily asks him if he has any last words before he kills him. Tom glares at Carl and says he should have killed him back in Philly. Carl smiles, saying he agrees. Just as Carl is about to kill Tom, Jack gets his hands on the shotgun and kills Carl. Tom gets up, he goes on to the shotgun from Jack and goes on to hug his son. In the next scene, we see Tom in a hospital bed because of his gunshot wound. Edie goes on to ask him about his past, making it clear that she wants the truth. Tom finally admits that he was in fact a teenage mob hitman named Joey Cusack, but he left the mob life many years ago after messing with Carl and became a totally new man, Tom Stahl. Tom claims that he used to kill, both for pleasure and for money. Tom gets home from the hospital where everyone seems to dislike him. The people of the town are now scared of him. That evening, Sheriff comes to visit them again and asks a few questions about the shootout between Carl's men and Tom. Tom is about to confess that he is Joey Cusack, but Edie suddenly steps in and offends Tom still. Sam acquiesces and leaves. After Sam leaves, Edie turns away from Tom in revulsion, slapping him and shouting. It gets intense, and the next thing we know, both of them are kissing. They then proceed to have a very intense hormone sandwich. Later in the middle of that night, Tom is awakened by a phone call from Richie himself. Richie makes an implied threat when he tells Tom to come to Philadelphia to see him, or Richie will come to his house to see Tom himself. Tom leaves his house at dawn and drives all day and night to Philadelphia and meets a young, rough-looking guy in a bar. The man drives him to a large mansion where Tom meets a well-dressed, confident man who appears very happy to see his little brother. After some small talk about Tom's new life, Richie begins telling Tom about the considerable, expensive trouble and loss of status within the mob, caused by Joey's actions before he disappeared. Tom, who no longer wants any part of the mob life, asks Richie to tell him what he wants him to do to make things right. Richie goes on to tell Tom that he might have to die, and this is when his men attack him and try to strangle him to death. But Tom manages to fight them off, and goes on to beat the crap out of them all. As he fights off Richie's men, Richie himself opens a drawer and takes out a gun. He tries to shoot Tom thrice, but Tom somehow keeps dodging the bullets and manages to get out of that room. Thinking that Tom has run out the front door, Richie follows him outside, gun drawn. Tom then kills the last bodyguard inside the house and locks Richie out. He kills them all because he does not want anyone to come back from his past and disturb his good family life. Richie is now in front of Tom. Tom knows that if he leaves his brother to live, he will keep bothering him, so he goes on to shoot Richie in the head, finishing him off. After returning home to find his family eating dinner, Tom is offered food by Jack and Sarah, signaling his acceptance back into their lives. And with that, the movie comes to an end. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.